Sometimes you have to work with stems that are some files that someone sent or that you downloaded so you could make music. And in Reaper, we have several options on how to deal with these stems, having really precise multiband processing. And I want to share one of those ideas with you. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and I'm going to show you how to make multi-track channels using third-party plugins within one single track, if that makes any sense. So we had this drum loop for the last video that, that we were talking about, where I printed only the stem out of the plugin with its own processing. The concept, the concept of this idea is to use Reaper's stock JS band splitter and bind and band joiners, either three, four or five bands. Remember that the more you split the signal, it's going to probably suffer more if when it's summing back up. So try it out, have fun with it. Let me show you what I did. The whole idea is that the first five band splitter that I did, I first have to use the plugin connector so it's plugged in correctly. So the first band goes to one, two, the second one goes to three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 and so forth. You could do it like this. So you might want to have all of the processing in one single channel in line inserted, but not every plugin is affecting every single band. Let me show you what I mean. For example, without the processing, the loop sounds like this. And it's really simple, really dry. It's nothing special, but I might want to start adding different plugins to the chain. So for example, why not use an 1175 so I can compress only the kick. The way this plugin is set up, I have 10 ins and 10 outs. If you remember from the diagram of the band splitter, we have one, two is low. Then I have low mids three and four. Well, let's call it mids five and six. So let's call it mid highs seven, eight and highs nine and 10, something like that. Oh, only the lows will go into the 1175 and the rest of the signal is going to go straight through the plugin. The more pins I connect into this, more of the signal will be affected by the compressor. So you see what's the idea. After that, I might want to use RC inflator. So I get some saturation and some harmonic distortion in the audible range from the kick drum. Let me turn it off and then on. And some plugins will be loaded like this, like they have already available certain amount of channels. And again, you just plug in which goes where and as long as you're only listening to that. What can happen eventually is that maybe you're trying an, a third party plugin like the little plate that I have assigned for three and four. So low mids. What can happen is that if you have this output unplugged, this band will not go through. So please just remember that kind of things. Because what you want is that every single plugin goes in line. For example, three and four will have only the little plate. Then it will have the rear gate in line, three and four again. Then it will have a little bit of saturation again plugged into again. And then it will have a little bit of saturation again plugged into three and four. So these three plugins are working in the mid band in this order like this. And even if I turn off only the low plugins, those are still working in the low mids. And I have another two plugins for the high end that are the show tape model. And I run into this little trick that I wanted to try out where most of the times the hi-hats can be a little bit harsh on the year around 2600, maybe 5K, depends on the sound. And I use the show tape model that it's a fantastic tape plugin, also free, also open source. 
I'm using tons of saturation here, tons of compression in here, and a really high each per second speed on the tape. Because remember, speed on tape is related to frequency. The faster the tape goes, the higher the frequency you can reach, and the lower the frequency go, the better the response is for the low end. I'll turn it all the way up and all the way down so you can listen to the frequency response. You could also goof around with the wall effect. Uh, this will probably give you some sort of tape flange effect. I'm going to sync it to two bars and then apply a little bit of this. Let me first make it a little bit much more dramatic so you get the idea of what it's doing. And it's giving this really small flange to the hats. And then this plugin is one plugin that I haven't seen too many people talk about in Reaper. And I really like what you can do with it. You can find it as transient driven auto pan. And you could have a transmitter and a receiver, but I, but I usually only use it as a transmitter. You can copy paste these parameters if you like, because these have been working more or less all right with me. The pan step size is whenever it detects a transient, it's going to pan the signal somewhere else within the left to right field. So the pan step size is how big is that movement. The random step size, it adds a little bit of noise, so it's not always so precise. Max pan is how big the panning will be. Then the fade time, how fast will the movement be? Then fade time will be how fast will this movement be of the current panning of, of the signal. Uh, sloppiness is going to introduce a lot of things. I really don't like that one. Uh, how much time do you want it to wait within one, from one panning to another? I can make it really big and I can make it extremely fast. So it's wheeling maybe way too much and it can go from one side to another. You can add sensitivity and this is the actual position of the panning. Let me show you how does that sound. I'm going to turn it off and then I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to make the max pan a lot wider so you can really appreciate what it's doing. Uh, more often than not, I usually find that smaller values closer to 50% are more than good enough. And you will probably want to really mess around with these parameters so you can find a sweet spot that you actually enjoy and it's not a DC feel or a distracting feeling. So yeah, you could build this whole chain in one single track with a five band splitter or what you could also do is with the same idea of the multi-out recording that we did on the last video, you could have five tracks receiving this. So you might want to call them low, low, mids, uh, mids, high, mids and high. Let's give all of them random colors really fast. There we go. And remember, you have to make one send from here to there. And the audio from is the one that it's going to be really important. So audio from one and two. For low mids, I'm going to have to take it out from three and four. For this one, it's going to be five and six. From this one, it's going to be seven and eight. And from this one, it's going to be nine and ten. Now I could turn all of these off. Let me remove those VU meters and now I can assign the lows to the lows, the low mids to the low mids, the highs to the highs and now I have the exact same sound. So please remember that if you're using this sense version of the same processing, you have to assign every single plugin again the plugin pin connector to one and two otherwise it won't sum up correctly. And remember to still have the the five bind joiner because I did a bounce where I was trying to compare the null test if it summed up equally without the five bind joiner and it does give a different result. As far as my understanding goes, you have to use the five bind joiner again before going into somewhere else. Because even if I try to put these two and just invert the polarity of one of the tracks, it doesn't null out. And I could try to make it, to make it work. 
but as you can see it's a really really small range like 0.3 decibels before it actually goes to a whole other place so you probably don't want to insist way too much on that and the benefit of doing it like this is that again you have maybe a much bigger control on how you are pushing every part of the signal instead of having one C one single big channel and again you can save this as a single track template that's called i don't know five band splitter and you can load it anywhere else and just for a final example of this same idea i have this loop i have this loop of a luscious pop sound And I'm doing exactly the same idea. I'm using for some things just the low end managing with the RC inflator. I deactivated the reverb and the gate. I have some saturation. Uh, I'm using again the tape on the high end because I really like the sound of it. I'm using uh, an actual universal audio and I'm using the universal audio tape Sutter 800. And I'm also using Tukan EQs because I really like Tukan's work. If you haven't used his bundle, go check it out i will link it in the in the description uh they are incredibly good and maybe you haven't even heard of them they are amazing channel strips and he has amazing tools so yeah have fun with this idea in this case this drum this drum loop actually came like this and if i turn this off so i'm doing some management of some things I'm not trying to say it does sound better, I'm just managing, managing things so I can show you how it works. Feel free to explore this idea, you might want to try this with some effects, with, with some creative processing of some sorts. If you like these kind of videos, remember to hit that subscribe button, that bell notifications, comment, share, and what of, all of those things that people on YouTube say. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.